Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Nation. And for today's episode, honestly, so much stuff has come out today. I'm I'm partially at a little bit at a loss for words. Okay, maybe maybe not that much, but it's definitely restored at least a tiny bit of hope towards this game and actually potentially becoming a fun game to play again sometime in the future. But uh, as well as the fact that we, we also just got a ton of new content uh, today as well. About half of it was is the usual, basically the usual month of reset stuff. So it's nothing too special. But the other half of it is something uh, worth, how should I say, taking note of, keeping an eye on basically. Um, because if they are going the way that I think they might be going, I might actually be able to start enjoying the game again. All right, so first of all, before I talk about anything else, let's go ahead and talk about all the usual stuff that we're expecting to get anyways for today. Because, you know, like I said before, the month has reset. So things like Coliseum uh, and Union Cross and such are going to reset. So in terms of Union Cross, for this week, we're going to be getting the Starlight Glasses as an avatar part uh, for Union Cross this week. And only lasts a week this time, which, thank God. Uh, whenever it lasts two weeks, it feels like it's stretching it just a little bit. But it is for just a week, and it is Starlight Glasses. The Starlight Glasses as well, though, um, these are actually kind of worth getting this time because the fact that they provide an item drop perk of plus six, okay? And that's actually pretty high for an item drop perk. Most item drop perks tend to be just plus three. So if I were you, I would totally recommend getting this if possible. Um, especially, especially if you're trying to currently grind out those uh, Beauty and the Beast farmable medals that we currently have within the game. There's only three days left. So if you're currently trying to get as many of these as possible and even get into the seven star, it's fairly easy. They're all tier three um, and we get tier three fairy medals like, like there's no tomorrow. So, so the avatar perk would be great on helping out with that. The monthly gem quests have also been reset. Uh, this is basically fairly normal. Uh, it shows you the five keyblades we're going to be using this time. Starlight, Three Wishes, Treasure Trove, Lady Luck, and Moogle of Glory. And since, because of the fact that today is Saturday, is the beginning of the weekend, uh, we are getting our new weekend raid event starting today. And this time we're going to be fighting the Scourge Spider. It is a power type this weekend as well. Pretty, pretty standard stuff. And last but not least, we are getting a new Coliseum PvE update where this time we can actually earn these new avatar parts within the game. These are actually uh, nothing special, but they're just kind of basic hairstyle avatar parts. To be honest, like I kind of wish they just kind of grouped these up along with some other avatar parts, maybe with like... I don't know pet avatar parts and just I I, I kind of I kind of think that they could have just lumped these together into a free-to-play avatar board instead. They could have legitimately thrown these avatar parts into one of these type of boards instead. Um, actually, give me a reason to actually use my avatar coins, you know, for once. At this point, I feel like if they're gonna give us anything in terms of like accessories, they kind of need to be something you know cool, flashy, or actually to, to, like something we actually find interesting to want to obtain um but if it's just something basic like just like a typical hairstyle or whatever um something that's not even related to really kingdom hearts they could honestly just throw it into a free-to-play avatar board like this uh that would that's an easy way to get rid of our avatar coins and make it feel like they're not just sitting there useless so that's my only gripe about that in terms of the the accessories for this month's Coliseum, especially since like it lasts for a whole month and it's really easy to get them. It's really easy to get past tier 11. We still don't have any more uh, Coliseum boards past a tier 11 at Coliseum board either, which is still kind of an issue. Okay, so aside from the usual typical uh, monthly reset type stuff that we, we kind of expect and see anyways, there are quite a bit of new things within the game that I honestly really want to talk about that's worth, that's honestly fairly interesting, it's kind of weird, I, I want to have high hopes for it into the future, that's probably the best way to say it. I want to have high hopes, but until I actually see, um, until I actually see action done to go along the way I would like to see it, uh, I'm not going to assume anything. But first of all, if you go ahead into the shop, uh, you, you can see we actually got a new Thank You Draw banner within the game. It is completely free. It's a free pull every single day for the entire month 
month of September. Um, in which case that every single time you pull from the banner, you're guaranteed at least one VIP coin every draw, as well as the fact you're guaranteed a 10 pull mercy pull on the Kingdom Hearts 2 Sword and Moogle medal that's within the banner too. And it's just kind of like how it was for uh, past free draw banners like this before where at the end of the month somewhere like within a week or two or so you will receive 1000 jewels for every single Kingdom Hearts 2 Sword and Moogle uh, medal that you currently possess on you. So if you log in every single day you, you have a chance of obtaining three of them I believe. So you basically have a chance to get 3000 jewels for free by the, somewhere near the end of the month afterwards. Um, and remember as well that we, if you do the survey that's currently within the game, uh, I'll be leaving a card up above to show you guys how to do that if you uh, don't know already. Uh, but you'll also be receiving 3000 jewels from that as well. This is basically just straight out of JP's version of the game, um, which is honestly the fact that we're sharing a lot of things from JP's anniversary is still honestly pretty cool to me uh and i like i was just not expecting it at all whatsoever so the fact we're even getting anything in the first place is honestly really cool really appreciate it a lot of things that they're doing for the jp version of the game i wish we kind of got during our actual second anniversary as well because ours let's be honest our second anniversary was pretty lame they were like it was more or less just banners nothing there's no actual like actual events that happened during our second anniversary it was it was it was pretty depressing um, so this gives me kind of a little bit of hope towards our third anniversary as well. Um, I'm hoping that when our, when Global's third anniversary comes around too, uh, JP can also get the same treatment and they can also, uh, celebrate our anniversary along with them. And let's be honest, at this point, we might as well just merge the two different servers at this point anyways, because we're kind of getting the same things at this point anyways. All right, so taking a look at the events section of the game, they've included three new events within the game that I really want to talk about, okay? First of all, let's go ahead and talk about the Take No Damage challenge that they have right here, where you can get EXP, brooms, and more, okay? First of all, just for the sake of pointing it out, let's just point out here that we already know <laughs> but just because of the fact that they've stated and more here, we know we're not going to get anything more special beyond the EXP and the brooms. Okay, let me just throw that out there. This is how they always communicate within the game. They always show, they always tell you exactly the best things that you can actually get within the game. And then they say and more or fabulous prizes or whatever. And when they say that, they basically just mean SIDS or money medals. It's hardly ever beyond that, to be honest. But let me go ahead and show you guys this. Um, these quests are by far the most challenging quests in the entire game. Um, to the point where I might even say that they're almost practically impossible. Uh, I've tried earlier today while I was live on stream on Twitch. Uh... And thank you, by the way, for all, all of you that uh, were able to join me there. Um, but I was trying to do these on Twitch, and these are by far ridiculous. The first reason being because of the fact that the, the conditions that they ask you to do over here... Now, normally these conditions would be alright, but because of how difficult the actual... Uh, I'm pointing the wrong thing. The, the actual boss is itself within these modes... It's, it's a little bit insane, um, the conditions they're trying to do on top of how much health they have, on top of the fact that you only have like two, three counters that you're actually working with, like enemy counters that they have on them, okay? And as you go up, they start going up in difficulty too. It starts going up to level 2,000. I think this one is uh, 3,000, yes. Um, the last three do reward you with uh, a broom. Okay, but just a broom. It's not a Fantasia it could be just a broom. And my issue with these is that they are just so ridiculously difficult and that they're basically not worth doing solely because of the fact that the rewards you get for doing them are not very good. Um, I've spoken about this quite a bit already, uh, but the this is kind of one of the issues that I have with this game right now, which is that the level of rewards that we get do not match the level of difficulty for the missions that they are given to. Like, for example, all right, let's take these last three missions, for example. Uh, on my stream, I legitimately was using 
a pure seven star setup on my counterpoint. Now I was trying to do the conditions where I only used five or fewer special attacks as is shown right here. Okay, and you have to do all three of these. So, and this is take less than a, I basically can't get hit. So I have to do, this is basically a one turn challenge. So not only do I have to do this in one turn, but I also have to do it in five or fewer special attacks. All right. So what I did was, cause this was the power stage. I did a counterpoint setup. I have a pure seven star setup aside from my Kyrie EX plus of course, but I did a pure seven star setup and I even used King Triton. Now, I don't have a 7-star Bob and Jack-Jack just yet, but King Triton is basically the next best thing in terms of magic for global. The enemy in this stage has about 20k bars of health, and when I was hitting him with my King Triton and even my Cop Medals, I was only doing 1k bar of damage uh, each medal. And if my King Triton was only doing 1,000 damage, per cast, uh, and I can only do five special attacks in order to meet the objectives to get this broom. To me, like this, this seems practically impossible. Even if you're using a Bob and Jack Jack, I don't think you, you can beat uh, these current quests as it is right now. Unless they were planning to release something in these next 12 days that somehow makes these last three missions actually possible. Uh, my main point is that the, that the actual reward to the providing us is not nearly worth the actual like effort or difficulty that they're trying to, that they have right here. Cause let's be honest, even though they're offering us three brooms right here, it is not worth going through hell and back <laughs> to try and complete these three missions, which are basically near the point of impossible. Um, we well, can easily get three brooms from Union Cross. And like, in my opinion, it's just not worth it. Uh, if they were to throw in actual worthwhile things within this mode that actually make me want to try and strive and try and figure out ways to beat this, then it might be worth it. But because of the fact that they're giving us Huey Dewey Louie's medals and EXP medals and money medals and SID medals and stuff, um, when they literally throw this on every other single event within the game already, even beginner stuff, it's, it's just to the point where like, well, if I'm going to get the same prizes for every single event within the game, there's no point in doing the hard missions then. I might as well just do the easy, easy missions and move on. That's kind of how it is. And this is kind of my biggest gripe at the moment in terms of uh, how rewards are going for this game. And that's why in my survey, when I filled it out, I was trying to like emphasize like, yeah, the rewards need to be better because the way they are right now, they're not incentivizing at all whatsoever. All right, so from aside from the take no damage challenge, let's go ahead and talk about the chasm of challenges. I swear to God, someone must have been listening to me somewhere, I guess, because I've already stated multiple times on this channel <laughs> that one of the things that I really want within this game, kind of like uh, I was talking about Brave Frontier in my survey uh, episode, about, like for example, one of the things I really wanted in this game, similar to how it is in Brave Frontier, are permanent, really difficult mission quests that you, when you beat them, you get rewarded super, really good, like items or medals that are only exclusive to those quests, for example. Now, it doesn't actually show it in the Chasm of Challenges, uh, but if you go to the details section and you actually read it right here, they have a special little line of text right here that I want to point out, which which, is say, which says, uh, you can obtain new medals in this trial, so give it your best shot, okay? The keyword being new medals, all right? So, uh, and of course, if anybody was able to actually complete the Chasm of Challenges like myself, uh, the farthest that it has right now is up to mission 15, which is fairly difficult. You basically need a full setup of seven star medals in order to beat this. Uh, it is really difficult, okay? But remember that these are permanent challenges. So the concept is as time goes on, these challenges will, will slowly become easier and easier to complete because of the fact that you know, as time goes on, better and better medals are going to come out and such. And, you know, better mechanics and updates and buffs and stuff are going to come out. So if you can't beat it now, don't worry. It is not a problem. These, This is a permanent new mode. So whenever, it's it's a nice little incentive to help get yourself to become stronger in the game. Um, so that sooner or later you can beat this. Now, like I mentioned before, the only thing of actual value within the Chasm of Challenges right now is just this Fantasia Mickey B they have on mission 15. Um, the rest of the missions were honestly, it was just, it was, it was just like EXP medals uh, and SID medals and stuff like that. There was nothing 
there's a few chips and dales, but like there's there wasn't really anything significant value until 15 for that Fantasia Mickey B. Now my hope is like this is what I hope for this. Okay? Now my hope is is that because of the fact that this is simply just they literally just released this mode, all right. It's supposed to give us a taste as to what could come in the future. So I'm hoping that when they finally update this section of the mode later on, I am praying that whatever new enemies actually finally come up within this mode, uh, they actually finally come with their own exclusive medals only available from doing this mode as well. That's what I'm hoping so far. <laughs> That's what I'm praying. Because if they do that, I swear to God, if they do that, I, I cannot begin to tell you how happy I would be that they, they, they've added this to the game. So I'm really looking forward to where they're gonna be going with this in the future. But last but not least, the last thing I wanna talk about is this new training stage, which is also a new permanent mode within the event section of the game, which is basically, uh, it's like the game's own version of a damage calculator that ke2xtracker.com offers. Um, they don't directly expre like express your damage values, like your overall damage output they have uh, within the game, but if you go into the actual stage itself, you'll actually be able to fight an enemy of a certain attribute as well as uh, either a flying or a ground type. They have one of each for each attribute, so basically for a total of 12 quests, I believe as well as a single target and AOE version as well. And these are gonna be great for anybody who's wishing, wishing to test out the setups and see how much damage they can do. Um, on top of the fact that it's also gonna help out members of the community, such as like myself, Rosie, uh, Ryu Gossin, and other members too, who happen to be doing some testing and researching within the game to try and find uh, certain values and such, such as the ones that are used on khuxtracker.com and such. This is gonna be a fantastic tool to try and figure out these type of values um, for our community's best interest. But other than that, if you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button. It's the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. Let me know what you think about the updates and events that we got in today's update as well. But other than that, my name is Brian from Kinemartine Cross Nation and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.